Hello Cup Coders and welcome back to Ars Magica Tutorials. Now we've got quite a bit to go through on this episode but before I, we do begin I want to go ahead and let you know that you see that there are four chests sitting off to the side there. Uh, what we're going to be doing from here on out is we're going to be using the same world save to do our tutorials. I'll just be rebuilding it as needed as I go. Uh, you also see I've got the, a little beacon light going up there that way if I get lost I can find my way back. But in all four of those chests are pretty much every spell in the game, minus a couple that I've already shown you. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do the tutorials as normal. And if we have time at the end of the tutorial, then we're going to go ahead and show you some of the spells as we go. Um, once we've covered all the major stuff, then we're going to go through... Sorry, I was setting the timer. Once we've covered all the major stuff... Then we're going to go through and just do a tutorials where it's nothing but the spells. But for now, we're just going to cover a few spells at the end of each episode until everything's taken care of. All right, so first I want to... Now, last episode, I talked about the different nexuses. I told you that there was the light nexus, the dark nexus, and the essence nexus. I want to go ahead and tell you now, before we begin, that the essence nexus is the base nexus. Okay? It is the nexus that the other two are compared against, and you'll see why here in a second. Um, when using these things, anytime you use, have a device that uses the powers these things create, it creates a, something what they call a deficit. Um, when it uses the power, deficit is created, and too much of a deficit will cause the device to explode. So you want to be careful how much you use the devices and how much ours magica is what I actually call it, magica. You want to be careful how much Magicka you have the devices using because the devices will explode on you if you don't. Um, you will use the Sense Energy spell to check to see the levels of, of the devices and we'll get to showing you that in this episode. Alright, now there are some more details about the, each Nexus that I want to show you before we get into you know some of the actual devices. Um, first off, the Light Nexus. We've already covered you know how it works. Um, it is power. It is focused on power conservation and deficit reduction. Now, what that means is that this, using this nexus, any device that is attached to this nexus will lose their deficit 25% faster than they would with the essence nexus. Okay, but these nexus also, the white and dark nexus also provide some. I, I don't know if you really want to call them bonuses, but some additional effects for the devices for specific devices. For instance, this light nexus, when you have a when it's feeding power to a calefactor, calefactor, the calefactor will cook 76% faster. It'll use 80% less power and you have a 10% chance of it doubling the item that it is cooking. Now, you will get we will get into the calefactor once we get into that building up there and I will show you how that works and what it is. Um, we will not get into the seer stone today, but if if a seer stone is powered by the light nexus, it has a 50% increased detection radius, which means it'll detect mobs or creatures 50% further away. If you use an astral barrier, which we will not be getting into in this episode, but if you use an astral barrier, it will inflict blindness anytime it blocks a creature if it's connected to a light nexus. Also, if you're using a light nexus to power a spell research table, which we will get into, it will use 50% less essence, or magica, as I like to call it, for you to research a spell. Now, the dark nexus, as you already know, kills enemies, kills creatures to give you power. But it is high power at a cost of a high deficit. What that means is any device connected to this thing will lose their deficit 25% slower than you would with the essence nexus. So these are a little bit more dark nexus are a little bit more dangerous because your your devices will build up deficit a lot faster and if you have too much deficit those devices will explode. You want to be careful of that. Um, in addition to that, a dark nexus affects the calefactor by it does increase the cooking speed by 50%. Not as much as the light nexus does, but it's still a, a definite increase. But it also uses 25% more magicka in order for it to burn things. Um, it also has a 12.5% of adding a 100% deficit upon creating the item. So that is, it, it, that's dangerous, you know. One or two items could literally make, the, make your calcifactor blow up. Um, and you have a 5% chance of destroying the item that you are trying to smelt as well. Now, when you use this with a seer stone, it'll have a 50% less 
detection radius. Sometimes that's good. I mean, you can have this set in a hallway facing against the wall, and that 50% detection radius could just reach through the wall. And you might not want to see anything outside the wall, especially if you're attaching it to a spellcaster that's throwing fireballs. No sense throwing a fireball when the creature's on the other side of the wall. So that's a bonus usage. But in addition to that, if you attach it to an astral barrier, it, any creature is going through the astral barrier will take some minor damage when it's blocked by the astral barrier. You don't want to attach your spell research table to it because the cost of the spell research table will increase slightly when used when being powered by a dark nexus. Oh, of course, like I said, this nexus, the essence nexus, it is it creates neutral power. It is the nexus that all other nexuses are compared to in determining what they do. Um, so this is really the basic nexus that's probably the very first nexus that you'll be able to build in game because it's readily available. I mean, the materials are readily available for the most part. You don't have to go to the nether like you do for these other two nexus. You have to go to the nether in order to get the materials for the, the structures. You don't have to go to the nether for this. A simple pickaxe and a furnace and you can build your nexus with this. So it's very easy, it's very neutral, and it, but it doesn't give you any additional effects to the devices. So any devices powered by this, you'll they'll just do what they're supposed to do, put it that way. All right, with that, we're covered. We're gonna go ahead on into the building here. And I'm gonna pick this Sense Energy spell up. I told you that we are gonna use the Sense Energy spell, and I'm gonna show you how it works, okay? First, we're gonna walk up to this nexus. As you see, it is a light nexus. It, it is using diamond caps, so it provides it produces more power than the nexus than the light nexus I have sitting out there. So we're just going to right click in here and you see it tells us that this has 30,000 essence. It is at 100% charge. Okay, so any devices within a 10 block radius of this will will pull charge from that and be charged up. Um, that probably means that all the devices around here are already charged up. As you see, that one's at 100%. That one's, well, that one's still charging. In fact, you can go back and look at it. Well, it was charged. Well, I, well, I don't know. Okay. All right, and we got that. That one's at 68%. That one's at 21%. So those are probably still charging. So they're probably going to be pulling off of this here shortly. Um, give me just one. It is getting dark outside. I guess it doesn't matter since i got lights in here. So we're going to just keep going. All right. First thing we want to look at is a spell table. A spell research table. That's what this is here. It helps you find new spells. Now to craft this, you're going to take... This, it takes four obsidian, two gold ingots, one diamond block... A pure Ventium crystal and a glass pane. Now we will get into building a pure Ventium crystal in a later episode. I have not set that up for this episode, uh, but we will show you that to you in a later episode. So this is the crafting recipe for making a spell research table. Once you place, make that, you place it down. It looks just like this in the world. You must have it within range of you know, one of the nexuses so it can get charged, as you see. And you look into it, and this is what it looks like. All right, so let me grab some stuff out of this chest back here. Now what, what I have here is I have three arcane essence, one book, one of the Ars Magica books, one feather, and an ink sack. Now to research a spell, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the essences, you place them in these three circles on the outside. Place the book up here, place the feather in here. And then place the ink sack here. They have to be in the right play position because, like, I picked up a feather, it won't let me set it there. They have to be in the right place. Now, as you see, it is starting to spin. It is researching a spell. This will take a few moments and then it'll come up with a spell and it'll place it there. Now, I want to go ahead and clarify, and as you see, I've wrote notes down. You know, you, just like I said, you place three essence with the journal, feather, and an ink in it, and it will find undiscovered spells. That means that if it's a spell that you've already got, that you've already found, and you've read the scroll, it will not find that. Now, if you found the scroll and you did not read it, it could still rediscover it for you. So it's very important that once you get into Ars Magica, any scrolls you find, you want to read. That way, when you use this spell research table, it'll actually find spells that you have not read yet. Now, this does use 100,000 Magicka essences. Or essence all right but it caps out itself at 50,000 so as it's working it'll use that 50,000 and it'll pull even more from the Nexus okay 
as you see it is still working in here and it is building our book our spell tome so we'll just let it work and let it go and we're going to move on to the next one which is the califactor i told you we were getting into this this is a magical furnace now once you build this you will not have to use coal anymore um, I mean, you still might want to use an actual furnace, but this is, it literally is a magical furnace. It uses magic to produce it. Um, with Without Foki, it is 20% normal. It is 20% slower than a normal furnace. So what that means is to, to cook a piece of wood will take a little bit longer in this calefactor than it will in an actual furnace. Not a problem there. Um, but you can put in three charge Foki and it'll make it 100% faster than a natural furnace will. So that there's an option. Um, it still gives you experience for smelting. It does have a small chance to produce Ventium dust when, you, when you're smelting items, but it does not work with hoppers. So if you want to create an automatic smelting system, you are not going to be able to use the Calefactor. But to, to build the Calefactor, you're going to take four smooth stones, just like so, two lapis lazulis, or lazuli, as I like to pronounce it, one piece of redstone and a piece of Ventium dust. And just put it just like so on your crafting table, and it'll make a califactor that looks just like this. Now, I've gone ahead and added some pork chop back here so we can throw it in there. There we go. So now the pork chop is in there. It is cooking. You see this bar is coming down. And these things up here are where you would put the foki. Uh, there's my understanding there's several different types of fokis that you can put in here. There is the charge foki. Um, there is a focus fo foki, I think is what it's called. I'm not sure. And as as you see, it's got a nice little thing. You know, when you put it in there and it's cooking, you can see it sitting right there. Uh, when it's done, it'll move it down into here, and it'll just keep stacking it up there. If it creates any Ventium dust in the process, it will drop the Ventium dust right in here. So this is one of those things that you can get it started, and you can just walk away. Um, Keep in mind, this one does not produce deficit. It does use your Magicka, but it does not produce any deficit in, the, in its operation, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, some of these other devices do produce deficit. I believe this one probably no, doesn't. See, that's done. The spell is completed, and it created the spell of Recall. Isn't that nice? We're just going to throw the spell back in there. All right, so this is that's how this works. I was hoping maybe it'll create, produce some Ventum dust, so we'll just leave it there. We might check back on it again. Uh, we're gonna come over here now. This is by far one of my uh, aside from. Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself here, guys. Aside from the spell research table, this is one of my favorite devices right here. Um, this one actually, and that one there. This is a magic fabricator. It literally does duplicate items. But in order for it to work, you have to put the recipe inside it. Now, I've already done that. I've already got a recipe in it, and we'll get to that here in a second. But to make it, you're going to take four stone bricks, arranged just like so in your crafting table, put one ender essence in the center. You want two arcane ash on the bottom corners, and you want two rune lanus, or the blue runes, on the top corners. And so it'll look just like so in your crafting table, and that'll create that. You place it down. You're going to want it near a button or some other redstone signal source. All right. Now, what this does is, like I said, fabricates items from the recipe. It does not use up the items in the production of it. It does need a redstone signal in order to operate. Its maximum charge is 15,000, which, as you can see, it's almost there. You add Foki to lower the deficit production. And without any Foki, you want to stop at three items produced, or the or it will blow up without any Foki. So as you see, I've already got an item in here. I've got three iron ingots and two sticks. So it looks just like a, recipe, a crafting recipe table, and that's because it actually does work like a crafting table. I could pick this iron pickaxe up right from here and go with it, but you don't want to do that. The whole purpose of this is that it'll duplicate items. So you put your crafting recipe in here. You'll see the item that it'll produce there. Don't pick it up. Just leave it there. Then you want to attach a redstone signal. And as you saw is what happened when I did that, it gave me a pickaxe. So we'll check this. You see it's got a deficit of 90. And as time goes on, that deficit will drop. So we'll create another one. Now the deficit is at 172, so we'll create one more. Now you see it's at orange. 
So I am not going to do this anymore because if I do, if I hit it one more time, this will explode. We don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw these pickaxes in here, and we'll move on to the last item for today. Now this item is an arcane reconstructor. Uh, actually, I don't have any items to throw into it here. Actually, let's let's do this. That's what we'll do. Let's grab this. And we need to go out here. Um, I'm going to go outside real quick and I'm going to use up this pickaxe for a little bit and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. I'm back. As you see, I have used the pickaxe a little bit and I picked up 64 cobblestone blocks. Um, it, as you can tell by looking at the pickaxe that it has been used quite a bit. So what we're going to do, this is an arcane reconstructor. We're going to get it. We're going to tell you about it first before we put this in there. Um, it does you place items in it inside this to repair them now to build this you're going to take five pieces of smooth stone now mind you this is smooth stone not cobble one diamond and two pieces of purple dye and arrange it just like so in your crafting table and that will make one arcane reconstructor now you'll place this on the ground you'll open it up and you'll get this interface now this is a very simple interface you put your three foci up here whatever foci you want to do um, like i said there are two different types of foci there's one foci that decreases the amount of mana that it uses. The other one increases, you know, makes it a little bit faster. But all you're going to do is you're going to take your pickaxe, place it in the left-hand side. Now, it'll pick it up. You can pick, put up six items here. It'll pick it up and put it in the center here, and it will repair that item. And when it is done repairing the item, it'll put it back down over in the right-hand slots. Okay? And as you see, you know, when, when it's repairing an item, you see it looking just like this. You know, three rings come up and surround the item and start spinning around it it looks nice and awesome and you'll know when it's done because then the rings will go back down and the item will disappear from off the top of it and that's that and that's how you repair items so this is a great item for using like if you have your diamond pickaxe that you've enchanted and you've got your silk touch and your looting and whatever else other spells on it you know enchantments on it that you want and you really love this thing you throw it in here and it'll repair it for you um it's not as bad as using for instance oh what is that an anvil uh, you had you have to have two of the same pick to, to repair it in, on an anvil well you don't have to do it here and it doesn't take any of your experience levels in order to repair it it does use up magica and it does not produce any deficit and that's that. That's how you do that. Now I've got a few more minutes left over. And see the item is done and it has been repaired. See now I have a perfectly new pickaxe that has come back. Now generally you're probably not going to use this for like iron pickaxes and stone pickaxes. Um, you probably will use this for you know diamond pickaxes and diamond swords and diamond armor. Especially things that you've enchanted. Um, that's definitely a good use for it. And that's really that's all that's used for. It's just to, just to repair items. All right, now I've shown you what the what the sense energy spell is, does. So before we go outside and look at a couple spells, we're going to throw it back in here. All right, now let's go pick up a couple spells out of these chests, and we'll show you what those spells do. I'm going to try to get through one stack of these spells, one line. And I designed it so that it'll be able to keep track of what spells we've done. So once we've done with the spells, I'll just throw it into the hopper, and it'll drop it into a chest below it. And that'll be that. So first one is growth. So here, let's go find something to grow. Um, well, I don't have till here. Better yet. Not better yet, better yet, better yet. We got to think about this for a second there. So we'll gra grab this growth spell. That didn't do anything. All right. As you saw when I cast growth spell, here it comes another flower right there. So let's go back over to the grass and we'll do this again in the grass. Ready? Yes, you see it grows flowers and grass so that you can harvest the flowers. And you'll know that this is very important, especially when you know you're making your runes. You know, this is a good way of coming up with different dyes for the runes or different plants um, as you can see you can get the orchids this way as well all right so there's one spell so let's go ahead and throw it back into the into the box the next spell is firebolt if you watch my arcania spell i've been using this one for quite a while now um, it is one of my most it is 
generally every time I played Ars Magica, this is one of the first spells that I've come across. I don't know if it's by design or if it's just, you know, my luck, but it's a very low budget spell that throws fireballs just like that. You can use it, set trees on fire, or use it to fight enemies. Um, it is an offensive spell, and that's pretty much it. And of course, you can increase the power to it, and which increases the range of fire that it does. Now, if you notice, I did set my level. I did set my magic level at 50, so we have plenty of magic to work with. So there we go. So that's that spell. The next spell is Gust. Literally, it just throws air. It pushes out air. Um, if I put here, here, let's do this. I'll throw that out there and it does nothing but if I find an enemy or a creature it'll push that enemy away from us let's see if we can't find you know a cow or a pig or a chicken or an enderman or whatever or something there's got to be something out here wow okay so I've spawned in a world with no creatures apparently actually no I didn't I, I saw an enderman earlier as I was going as I was digging the cave but I don't see anything here Oh, there it is. It, it does push them away. It also damages them. So it is a way to kill them. But for the most part, it just pushes them away. And drops them. The longer you hold them up there, the more damage they take when they drop, finally drop down. So that's that spell. Um, next spell is jump. Literally jumps you. Now, I know most people are going to look at this spell and be like, well, what's the point of a jump spell? I mean, because you can jump yourself, right? All right. But if you look, here, I'm going I'm to walk up to this. When I jump, I barely get to the top of that. When I use the spell, though, I jump a little bit higher. Now, of course, you can empower the spell a little bit more and jump even higher. So the more power you put into the spell, the higher you can jump. Um, so that's the purpose for that spell. You can actually get into places that you normally otherwise wouldn't be able to without mining or caving or building up. You know, some like a lot of people will jump up on dirt and place dirt pillars up to get up stuff. Well, you can use the spell and get up the stuff that way. So the next one we have is Earth Shift. So we're going to do that right here here that shifts a piece of earth up literally it's exactly what it does it shifts it upwards so let's go ahead and earth shift there it won't do it through the water but boom it does that boom all right so we're going to put that back in there i mean that would be a useful spell for moving stuff around um as you saw you know i pick up the when i shift the grass up the grass stays on the dirt um so that's a way of getting the dirt your dirt fields up a level you know f leveling everything out you can just shift stuff up to match and not have to worry about waiting for the grass to regrow uh, the next one is dig now i know a lot of people have looked at this spell and been like why do i need that i mean Almost everything in the game can be dug up with a pickaxe or a shovel. Well, here's why. Instant. It is instantaneous. You don't have to wait for it. You don't have to sit there and go and dig, 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 dig until it goes through. You don't have to worry about, oh, well, do I have a diamond pickaxe to get this piece of obsidian? No. You have a dig spell. Now, mind you, I'm hitting right click right here. It's not picking up the, the ice. This spell will not work on everything. And some materials, you will have to increase the power amplitude of the spell in order to get through them. But in addition to that, you know, as you see, I'm increasing the amplitude. It does a little bit larger range when I do that. When it's at the weakest, it only hits one piece. So that is a way for you to dig more than one block at a time. It is also a way for you to dig into blocks that you wouldn't otherwise normally be able to dig into. Um, for instance, like I said, you know, obsidian, if you don't have a diamond pickaxe, or it's a way of picking up the diamonds out of your, out of a cave without having an iron pickaxe. So it's a very beneficial spell there. The next one is aqua. Literally creates water. 
So now we have flowing water there, and I'm gonna grab this. Oh, oh should have kept that dig spell. Hold on. Oh, it's not in there. That's because it's down below. So we're gonna pick up some dirt here, and well, actually, we'll just leave it there. But that's what Aqua does. It creates water. So give me one second. I don't want to be outside at night. You know, I am on playing survival mode here. So we're just gonna go ahead and cheat. Time set, and as you can see, I've already done this once. So it makes it daytime, so I don't have to worry about creatures. All right, so that's what water does. Um, obviously, you know a beneficial place for this is when you're in caving and you see lava, you can throw water down to turn the lava into obsidian or cobblestone, and it can it can be a lifesaver. In addition to that, and this is a little known thought, most people don't even think of this, not even in vanilla Minecraft. You know, in vanilla Minecraft, when you're in a cave system, and you've got a bucket of water with you if there's an enemy coming at you you can drop that water down in front of you to slow them down from getting at you now of course this will separate you because since the, the source block is in front of you it's going to push you backwards and push them away so it's a way of separating yourself from the enemies and slowing them down from getting at you all right so let's throw this in there and you know what another clear ah Ah, they're not gonna worry about it. Let it go. All right. So the next one is Furnace Touch. Now, this one is a very interesting spell in its own right. Um, when I first saw this, my first thought was, Oh God, what? You know, so I'm gonna be able to burn pigs and and get burnt pork chops. No, you can't. Um, what this does do is it allows you to smelt any blocks that you would otherwise have to throw into the furnace, but it allows you to do it in place. For instance, here's boom we're going to put put that there that kills the water there we go so we're going to take this furnace touch and we're going to turn this into glass exactly so i just use furnace touch to turn sand into glass in place without a furnace that's exactly what it does it will not hurt harm enemies in fact you can't even cast it on a creature you can't even cast it on a pig so unfortunately i mean it would be awesome yeah i'd love to be able to walk up to a, a chicken hit him with furnace touch and get some cooked chicken out of it but you can't do that what you can do is you can furnace touch on a tree um in fact let's go get one i don't want to use a big tree i want to use a small tree one i can chop down easily you can furnace touch on a tree and it'll make oh it burned it up where'd it go oh, there it is and it makes charcoal you can furnace touch directly on the iron that's while it's sitting in the in the stone and it'll make you guessed it iron ingots of course now it does not work on non smeltable blocks um, let's see if we can't find some iron in over here or better yet here we go I've got that there and I just turned it to smooth stone. So I lay place cobble, use furnace touch on it, and get smooth stone. So that's a faster way of making your castle. If you're going to make a castle out of smooth stone, just go ahead and build it out of cobble and come back with furnace touch and burn it, smelt it all into, into smooth stone. So that's one way of doing that. So let's go throw this one in there. And we've got time enough for one last spell. This time is Arcane Bolt. This is enough. It's another one of my favorite spells. It is a powerful spell, um, but it does use uh, eat up a lot of mana quickly, even though you can't tell it here. But as you see, I'm just holding the button down, and it just automatically fires. Like a machine gun. So there's that. All right, and there you have it. There's the first set of spells, and it's as well as more information about the Nexus and the first couple of Ars Magica devices. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, let us know how we did in the comments below. If there's anything else that you'd like to see a little bit more of, let me know. And as you see, here we go. And back in the Califactor, it did cook the raw pork chop. Um, it seems to have stopped. And it has, well, it seems to have stopped because it made... You know, it's 64 pork chops in here, which means it did duplicate some of the items. As I told you earlier, when you have a Califactor hooked up to a light nexus, it has a small chance of duplicating items. And as you see, it did do that. It actually duplicated six pork chops in the process. And as you just heard, I did get experience for picking up the pork chop out of there. And it created two Ventium Dust 
at the same time. So there's another benefit of using it. Even though it is slightly slower than an actual furnace, it does have its benefits. It can duplicate items and it does give you some Fintium dust to go along with it. So it's actually worth it to use this instead of an actual, instead of the regular furnace. Um, I said earlier I didn't want to show you, I didn't want to make this blow up, but we are actually going to go ahead and make this blow up just so that you can see what happens. Um, as you know, we do have the iron pickaxe in here. And actually, there's one more thing I need to tell you about this, and I totally forgot about it. Now, this caps out at 15,000 essence, as they call it. I like to call it Magicka. But it does cap out at 15,000 essence. If you put anything in here that uses more than one diamond, it the cost of it will exceed 15,000, which means you will not be able to use this to fabricate any items that have more than one diamond as part of them. Now, I... That is unfortunate. Now, I, you, while you can use this item over here, while you can use the reconstructor to repair a diamond pickaxe, you cannot use the fabricator to create duplicate pickaxes. It won't work. All right. It just it, it doesn't have enough power to, to, to power it. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hit this several times. I didn't bring my sense magic spell with us, but we're just going to go ahead and hit it a couple times, get a couple pickaxes out of it and have it explode on us. So here's one. Two, three, four, five, hmm. Oh, it doesn't have enough mana. It must be it. It doesn't have enough magicka to continue. Let's go check this. That is down. Ah, okay. So that is charging up. Up oh, right, over here. Duh. See that is a 420, and we need actually 2300. We need this to charge back up before we can hit it again. Um, actually, here, here, let's let's do this. Let's do this. We're gonna take this out of here. And well, bingo, 360. Bing, bing. And you see it? Ah, we keep running out of mana. <laughs> All right, well, it, you know, we don't have enough mana to continue. So I haven't been able to make this blow up on you. Definitely going to continue. Yeah, it doesn't look like I'm going to make this blow up. I have definitely, I, I've tried. Um, so, but I just want you to know that, yeah, all right, see, it's the number, the deficit is up to 700. If that deficit does manage to reach 1,000, this item will explode. Now, mind you, that is 1,000. Um, the more expensive an item is to produce, the, f the more deficit it will produce. All right, so we're just going to let that go. Um, actually, no, I'll tell you what, let's let it charge up, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. Um, what I'm doing right now is this is the Channel Essence spell. Um, so I figured I'd go ahead and show you what Channel Essence spell is while we're doing this. Um, anyway, time you, you, when you cast the Channel Essence spell and you're standing near items that use Magicka from a Nexus, it literally does recharge those items. As you see, we're at 100% now. So, all right, so that's how that works. You just put the Channel Essence spell in your hotbar, stand next to it, right-click to cast it. Um, and it'll shoot out all these little beams and recharge the magical item so that you can use it. So we're going to go ahead. Uh, this is at 370, so we're going to click a few times. Notice that I am using a button here. Um, that is because this only works when the charge is turned on. So if you turn on a redstone circuit and you leave it on, it will not work. It only, come, it only works when the redstone circuit comes on. All right, so we're at 630. 626, 722. All right, we're going to blow up here in a minute. Boom! As you see, that is how that works. And ouch. 
and it blew up the chest that was near it and the sign. So it, it, you definitely want to be careful about how often you use these and how much death that you create. Um, so that is a major <laughs> bad thing right there that would happen. If I wasn't on creative, that probably would have killed me. So there you go. There you have it. Like I said, thanks for watching. As always, a like and a share lets us know that you care and it gets us out there. See you on the next episode.